Now I've got with me here one of possibly three gaming phones with the new Snapdragon 865 Plus that I intend to cover here in the channel. It is the Asus Republic of Gamers 3 phone and it has a 144 hertz screen now. It's the same 6.59 inches. We gain an additional camera on the rear and a slight improvement here and there with a few things. And of course, it does have that faster new chip. Now, this model here is the 10 cent version, which is quite a bit cheaper to get this local domestic Chinese release, import one in, than buying it locally. That's probably why you would do it. However, of course, it is the Chinese ROM. It does not have your other European languages. It's Chinese or English with this particular model right here. Apart from that, it's really the same phone. And it does have a little bit of Chinese blowware, but this, if you're really into your gaming phones and you are looking at getting a new one, you don't already have, say, the Republic of Gamer 2 phone, is definitely worth a look. Let's find out why in this full in-depth review. So the box is a little bit different because of this being the 10 cent edition. See 10 cent games on the side, the guys behind PUBG. And for those who dare, so in here we should have our case for it. So we'll have a hard case. SIM tool right here, and some paperwork, okay? So they also give us uh, some stickers too, if you want those, those are included there in the box. And here's the case. So the case is a little different, it's quite light, and it's just gonna protect the edges of the phone, but I will show you what it looks like when it is on there. So again, 10 cent games, you probably don't know, I don't actually know if you get this exact case uh, with the local model, probably not, a little bit different, I would say. All right, let's have a look now what else we have. The phone, of course, there's a little warning here too. See this? It says Type-C port on this side, that's for the dock. And do not insert Type-C cable into this port. Okay, they tell us not to do that. All right, so under here is where we'll find our cable and the charger. So Type-C to Type-C charger. And I can see we've got 3.5 millimeter cable here to type C, so yes, you guessed it. On a gaming phone, lacking 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is, I believe, quite a big error. A gaming phone definitely should have that. And here is our charger. So this one is 30 watts that it is using. Type C put on the back and two prongs, so that's why I need that adapter. First thing you notice when you get this phone in hand that it has a bit of heft to it. It is heavy, okay, 242 grams. It's not gonna be for everyone having such a heavy large phone in your pocket. Now the thickness of this isn't exactly slim either, all right? So 9.8 millimeters. And if you include the camera, which does stick out, you can see almost two millimeters, that brings it up then to 11.6. Along the top here, we do have the two triggers. So these two triggers here are the gaming triggers that you can assign, I'll show you that later on. And right here, we've got metal power on and volume rocker there. So they feel good, they do not rattle around. Microphone right here, and right at the bottom of it here, type C port, okay? And a microphone, so this is good. Nice rounded edges, tenor lines you can see there, nice metal frame. Gorilla Glass 5 on the back of it, 10 cent games is right there. This part here is a little bit see-through, and then we've got the RGB bling on the back here, if you like that. So this is the Republic of Gamers logo, and you can change and adjust the colors with this here. Take a look at the cameras now. So a little bit different to the previous model that we now have a 64 megapixel Sony IMX686, 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a five megapixel one for our macro shots. There is a microphone there on the rear of it as well. Now, when you take a look at the left side, we have this right here. So that's where they stated to not insert anything. But if you remove that rubber gasket, here it is. It's just a tiny little gasket. Difficult to get out, but if you insert into the red type C port, you will have video out. It's just a complete clone of the display. That's it, there's no special desktop mode like a Samsung or Huawei, Huawei phone, that is it. So that is good. And here we go, the SIM tray too. I didn't mention that, did I? It takes two nano SIMs and no micro SD card support. And up the top, we just got a microphone. Okay, that's, in fact, no, just two antenna lines and the mic, sorry. So no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this is a real shame. I think a gaming phone definitely needs to have a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, and I think most people would agree with me on this. Now we do have rather large top and bottom bezels. Yes, they're not the slimmest out there, and up top, well, we've got a 24 megapixel front-facing camera. 
And this is what it looks like with the case on it. So it does offer protection for the cameras at the rear because it's raised up a little bit. So they will not actually end up touching a table if you place it down. It leaves the dock open here. And why is it open on the back here? Because you can actually get an optional fan attachment for this particular phone. The buttons are not covered there either, but it does cover the corners. So it's really offering minimal protection for, well, a reasonably expensive phone here, costing about, uh, well, just under 600 euros, this one. Taking a look now at our panel. So this is a very nice AMOLED screen that's in this. The resolution is Full HD+. Plus. It has a 144 hertz, not actually maximum refresh rate. There is a hidden 160 hertz that people in XDA have discovered. Make sure you do a little Google search to find out if you want to do that. I'm not fussed with that because running an extra 16 hertz, you will not notice the difference. So blacks on this panel, very, very good. Can you see any flaws? Can you see funny green patches? anything like that that we have seen on some of the OLED AMOLED screens that have been coming out recently from other brands. No, this one is very, very good. So those are the settings we have for the refresh rate. You can set 90, you can set 120, whatever you prefer, or you can keep it on auto. But for this review, I'm keeping it on 144 Hertz here. Now, interesting that there are no actual settings in here for DC dimming. Now this panel should support hardware DC dimming to stop some of that flicker you'll see at lower brightnesses, pulse width modulation flicker coming through. No, no option for that. Now we've got our typical tweaks here, of course, for our colors, but they call that splendid. That is their own way of where you can adjust the white balance here and you can set it to normal default. Now that flickering that you can see a little bit coming through, I do apologize for this, only on camera, but if I had DC dimming, you wouldn't actually be seeing that at all. So let's have a look at some sample real world images just to very briefly show you what you can kind of expect that it's a very, very nice screen. The maximum brightness being uh, the 100, sorry, 750 nits is very good. And in sunlight, sunlight agility, I, was, I would rate as above average, but definitely not the best I've seen. Now you can see that flickering coming through just a little bit, but overall, very good. Now touch response with this screen is super quick as you'd expect. It's a very high sampling rate that Zeus have set. So this model has face unlocking and it works very well for me and even in low light it seems to be not too bad, but I prefer higher security so I go with the fingerprint unlocking. So first tap to wake it up and then place my thumb here and you'll notice that it's a little slow. It's certainly not the fastest I have seen with a mobile phone. I, I'm getting faster from my K30 Pro and various other models, especially Realme's X50 Pro, a bit faster there. So they can improve the speed there of the fingerprint unlocking. So I've gone straight into what they call, the Chinese translation is a bit poor here, Armory Crate, but this is your gaming mode here. So we have various different settings that we can set the performance mode. So X mode pushes the thermal limit on this, allowing it to get a bit hotter than normal, clocking up the GPU and the CPU very high and just really forcing a high performance governor on that CPU, on those cores to get a maximum performance. A lot of customization in here. So per game, you can set different settings for each individual game in your game library here. So for example, I decide that, okay, Grim Valor, all of these games here, by the way, support 144 Hertz or even more. Some of them are uncapped. So you can use the system setting, which is the X mode I'm currently on, or you can actually just override this. You want hardcore tuning. So some of these modes actually locked out to us because I do not have the fan. So if I decided actually I want with our temperature mode, I wanna have it actually really high, it won't let me with some of these things. So you go to save it and it just will say, no, you need to use the aeroactive cooler, which I simply do not have. So you can tweak that. You can also set options like what refresh rate you wanna use for this. So it's very handy, but I won't go into too much detail there. It is basically a very good gaming hub with plenty of settings, settings in there. You can also record your gaming footage. You can do many, many things with this. So I will show you later on in this video more about those gaming features because once you're in game, then you've got a menu that you can swipe from the side that gives us a lot more options, but more on that later on. Let's just have a look first at the ROM performance. So it runs Android 10. It has a July the 1st security patch level, so that is very recent. And the performance of this, flawless. Very, very good. App launch times are very quick. I'm not seeing any gestures, stutters, lag, nothing. Gesture detection, swiping, perfect. Very good. Very quick to response of touch input is just 
blazing fast. Now we've got the 12 gigabytes on RAM on the RAM here, and what happens is it does actually end up closing off quite a few applications in the back if you leave them too long. It's about the 10 minute mark, sometimes earlier. So we can't take advantage of the 12 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, if you wanted to multitask running 10 games at once to try and fool the 12 gigabytes, it's just not actually possible with this one. So getting the phone with 16 gigabytes is even more silly, okay? It's just marketing. Bragging rights, maybe you want to get and say, hey, my phone's got 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's double your laptop, yada, yada, yada. It's really quite pointless there. So because it's a Chinese ROM, you will sometimes have some apps that will push through some notifications like this in Chinese. You simply just need to disable it. Not too much of an issue. The weather app, yeah, okay, that's all in Chinese and you cannot actually do anything about that. It doesn't translate or pull over, but not a problem. Use another widget, use another weather app there. It's easily fixed. Now I've placed a couple of voice calls and it's fine. Good quality, not a problem there with that. So let's take a look at some other things here to do with the ROM. So we do have camera two API support. So look for a Gcam port for this one and you'll see why later on, okay? Because low light photography with these cameras, mm, not good, okay? Now, because I tend to report everything I discover with my phone reviews, that I sometimes have this problem, even on the last patch, that when I start to record a video or just a few seconds into it, it crashes for some reason. Video recording failed, and that's the error. So I thought I would point that out. Uh, we've got dual frequency, carrier frequency GPS. So that is good. It sees a lot of satellites, huge amounts, and yeah, accuracy is not going to get any better than three meters, sadly, but that's because it's Qualcomm, all right? If it was MediaTek, you can get down to one meter, but that is the cap, the limit, uh, with the Qualcomm chipsets. Here we do have a wide volume level one cert. Didn't expect this. I thought it would be level three. Normally with a Chinese ROM here, uh, you would think that they wouldn't even bother. But that's good. It's probably pulled through from the global ROM that they have the certification. So Netflix in full HD but I can't find it in Google Play Store. You need to sideload it or just download the APK file. So very quick internal storage. Look at these speeds here. They are really, really, really quick, okay? So we are seeing almost, well, pretty much maximum kind of levels here and those random reads and writes so, so fast. So this is now the battery life. So 144 hertz is what I tested for this one here. 12 hours is very respectable. So it's gonna last a whole day. This was at the brightness at 200 nits. And later here, okay, Antutu score. I think they could be cheating on this one personally because that GPU score is just ridiculous. It seems to be way too fast. It's supposed to only be a 10% increase, but this was the X mode and it triggers the X mode whenever it detects a benchmark. And that's, think, that's why I think they're kind of cheating a little bit on here. I know there's gonna be some fanboys in the comments going, how can you say that? You've got no proof. This is just a theory of mine, okay? But an amazing score. Nevertheless, an absolute amazing, astounding score here, getting over 600,000. I've never seen this high. This is probably the record for now. And you do get a lot of free storage on first boot. However, we do get on first boot a lot of bloatware that you need to just remove. Now, when you remove it, if there's an over-the-air update, at least for me, it added some of the bloatware back again. So you've got to go back and repeat the process and remove that, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so this phone's got fantastic audio. These two frontwards firing stereo loudspeakers, they have definite stereo separation. You can hear the left and right channels. They offer a very decent blend of both lows, mids, and even a bit of highs in here. And I love the way that it gives you a little bit of a vibration inside the case when you're holding it, especially when gaming. So these are fantastic speakers, hands down. But where's 3.5 millimeter jack? Uh, it's got to have it. I mean, it's a gaming phone. It should definitely have it. So you do have the option, of course, of Bluetooth audio. And using ones like this, these are going to be reviewed in the channel soon my one more ANCs that I've got. Good, okay, we can get aptX support with this. You've got AAC codec, and voice call quality as well is fine with this phone, okay, no problems. But here's a sample now of these great sounding loudspeakers, loud but high quality.
So looking at gaming performance now, you need to hunt around and find games that actually do run at 144 hertz. There's plenty of titles out there that actually have unlocked frame rates. Uh, Real Racing 3 is one of them. Grim Valor, which I'm currently playing here, also supports that. Now, when you swipe here from the left, you get our Game Genie, and you can see all the options we've got there. You can override the refresh rates. You can set that at whatever you want. You've got X mode that is currently on. Crosshair, record macros the air triggers of course at the top you can configure those so it's just simply a widget that you drag over the top for those triggers i've seen that in the other gaming phones there's quite a few out there now that have the triggers and what else can we do well you've also got this one here the real-time info that i have enabled i really do like this you can see this little widget that floats around that you're able to just go and move this to wherever you want and that displays how the cpu is performing the gpu the load and we can see our battery there and the temperature too. And of course, our frame rate. So let's have a very quick look at a little bit of gameplay here that this is just so smooth and I'm probably gonna die here straight away. But just very, very smooth here. But you gotta find the games, of course, that support it. Another game that does support the 144 refresh rate, 144 FPS is this game right here. And the top triggers do come in handy, and oh, I didn't even manage to kill that guy myself. And it's just so smooth at the 144 hertz, this gameplay. And we'll have a look at how Call of Duty runs as well. So on the maximum settings, so the max frame rate and very high visuals. So we're down to five players now, and I've got 11 kills. With Call of Duty, it's just so much easier, I find. Even at the high visual settings here, just a steady 60 frames per second constantly. I do hope the developers will soon add support for higher refresh rates, then this game will be, well, it'll be even smoother, and we can finally take advantage of having such a really good refresh rate on a mobile phone here. But it seems I've got an advantage anyway, just having such great performance. The stereo speakers definitely do aid with detecting where players are, and that's probably why I've managed to get 11 kills and right down to the, well, the very end, but the guy's in a tank. So looking now at the camera, we've got the main sensor, it's a Sony IMX686, very capable, 13 megapixel ultra wide, which is a omni-vision sensor. Now, video mode, we can shoot in 4K 30, 4K 60, and 8K 30 as well, all with electronic image stabilization, and that is quite good. Now, I find the Ultra wide video you see later on from the quality is probably the weakness here definitely with the video. There is also an option as well if you tap the microphone here. So you've got wind noise reduction and also mic focus. You can get this over all of the video. It's a good setting to have. So portrait mode, pretty standard, self-explanatory. Night mode as well. Pro mode, so we do have the ISO setting of up to 3200 and shutter rate up to 32 seconds. Let's have a look at some samples now. So a quick sample of our video quality here. Now you can shoot 4K 60 frames per second. This is 4K 30 and we can also shoot 8K video 30 frames per second. So it does have some relatively smooth and you can hear the cicadas in the background. That's that horrible high pitch continual noise. It's not a fault with the microphones. It is actually just those bugs in the background singing away. So stabilization good. I've noticed that when I pan around that we sometimes tend to get a few little judders and stutter coming through with this electronic image stabilization. So this is a video with the front facing camera and it does have very good electronic image stabilization. We're getting a lot, a lot of wind noise coming through. It's very, very windy here every single afternoon. I do like what I'm seeing with this quality. I like the fact that it's got the stabilization. You only got 1080p max though with the front cameras here. So no 4K option, which you know, that would have actually been nice. So I'll do a quick little jog down the stairs here again just to show you that stabilization working. So if you intend to shoot a lot of vlogs and things, then I think you'd be pretty happy with the front facing quality you get here with the Republic of Gamers 3 phone. Ultra wide video does have some really good image stabilization. It however isn't the same quality as the main sensor as expected. That 13 megapixel Omnivision isn't quite as good, but look at the stability super usable great looking smooth steady footage i really do like it now you are looking at 8k footage this normally has a frame rate of somewhere about like 25 to 30 frames per second at times but it does drop frames a lot 
However, it's good to see that we do have electronic image stabilization with 8K footage. Of course, it is downsampled to 4K what you're looking at now. And if you tap the hyper steady button, we've got there more aggressive electronic image stabilization. This is even more steady. I'm going to just run ahead, run up the stairs here. And you'll see it does a good job with this. Really quite smooth, like it's on a gimbal. Very good speakers on it, great gaming performance, amazing battery life. So you can get one day at 144 hertz, you can get two, three days even if you use a lower refresh rate. So if you go for 90 or even 60 for maximum battery life and just when you game, you can then swipe from the side in the Game Genie and set the 144 hertz for games that of course support it. That brings me to another thing. There are not a huge amount of games out there that do have uncapped frame rates or support say a fixed capped 144 hertz. But look around, there is a handful, well actually a lot more than a handful. There's probably about like 40, 50 games now that do support a faster screen like this one here. So where are the cons? So with this particular import model, while it is a lot cheaper, I mean a really huge amount cheaper than buying the local version here in Europe at least, you do of course have the Chinese ROM. And that means we've only got English, we've only got Chinese on there. And we get a little bit of Chinese bloatware. Most of it you can remove. You sometimes see a little bit of Chinese in some of the apps, but it's not really that much of an issue with this particular model. Camera performance is its area of weakness, okay? So I did expect it to perform about what it's performing here. It's a gaming phone. They don't focus on the cameras too much, to be honest, but the night mode should have been a lot better. So look for a Gcam port to improve that. The other thing is, why is there no 3.5 millimeter he headphone jack? That would have been really nice to have, especially on a gaming phone, because you cut down on that input lag you can sometimes have with Bluetooth audio, which is not great to have in gaming, of course not. So that's why you want a hardwired analog audio there. No issues with latency then. The other thing is the charge time. It kind of surprised me in a bad way. I expected at 30 watts this to charge in, I don't know, 6,000 milliamp hours would take about an hour and a half, right? Guess again, it's close to about two hours with this one. It's just under, about an hour and 50 minutes or so it took me to fully charge it from 3%, which is modest. Is it gonna be an issue? Not with the amazing battery life this has. Really, I think most people charge it overnight. When you go to bed, plug it in, charge it, remove it, and it's good for a day or two days or three days, like I mentioned there before. So overall, if you're into your gaming phones, you want that amazing performance, the high refresh rate, one to go for, but if you already have, say, the Black Shark 3, you already have the Republic of Gamers 2 phone, or the Red Magic 5, I wouldn't even consider getting this because it's not even really that much of a step up in terms of performance, gaming that is, unless you look at synthetic benchmarks. So thank you so much for watching this in-depth review, and I'll see you back in the next one.